アメリカ最大の自動車メーカーであります GM spearheaded the technological development. He showed us some videos. As you can see, it's not just driving a vehicle with AI in a very simple environment, but in actual street. There may be a work going on, there may be signals that failed, and there may be cars that are in front of you. There are, are a lot of unpredictable events in. Complicated environment. AI computer will have to make decisions, may have to violate the traffic rules,、uh, they may have to move on to prevent congestion. The humans do violate rules as we drive. There may be a truck stopped in front of you, we have to cut. Cross the yellow line, the center line to move on. So there are s e t of rules that have been decided, but humans will make the optimum decisions to break some rules. So similarly, AI will and should be able to make that decision as it navigates. In 30 years or 50 years, imagine in a City. Suppose 100% autonomous driving vehicles are there in the city, meaning we do not need any signals any longer. Even without signals, autonomous vehicles will be able to recognize another car approaching. And avoid crashing into each other if this is possible. The cars may be able to travel at 200 kilometers per hour on a local road because it is capable to speed up to 200 kilometers per hour, but currently cars are simply driving at 30, 40 kilometers per hour a day. But just imagine, no accident could be caused by a car that could just pass away in a city road. Same road infrastructure is going to be free of congestion. There will be many more transportation opportunities provided. In other words, AI. We'll be able to improve the efficiency of almost everything, get rid of accidents, make it cheap, and make it evolve. Now, let's look at the next industry, which is, for example, finance. In finance,、uh, everything is transacted through the use of signals. If so, I think that finance is even better matched、uh, for AI because you don't have to move、uh, physical things. You can move money using signals without moving physical things. You'll be able to judge the credibility of a person by data. If so, in the past, it's been said that、uh, finance in the past、uh, had been suffering slow、uh, screening,、uh, high risks, and uniform products, and that's why there was not much business. But if you could have on the spot screening with reduced risks and not uniform products, but customized products、uh, through the use of fintech, then you'll be able to. More cheaply, more conveniently, more swiftly provide financial services. And so the key rests in data. Now, Paytm is an Indian company and it's、uh, partnered with Alipay in China. And Paytm is ingested with Alibaba and SoftBank's capital as well as know how. So it's a Infusion of many things, and Paytm is ex exploding in the field of payments and settlement. It's increasing its users and causing a revolution in that country. So, we now have Vijay, who is the founder、uh, and an entrepreneur, the, to talk to us about Paytm. So, 
Vijay, please. Sometimes it really comes upon a team of young people to reject what is there and say, we will not accept how it is. And we will build a new system or a new platform or a new paradigm on some things as fundamental as payments, as something as fundamental as driving we just learned in the first half of this conversation. PTM is a story of how technology, big data, AI, could build, democratize payments for a third world country like India. Remember, payment is traditionally a business model where when you on your shop have somebody walking in and paying you through currency, cash, you're not charged anything. And when they pay using card or some other digital method or new payment method, you're paying something. In a country like India where every rupee that you can save or every fee that you are saving matters a big important thing for business, we had a challenge to build as fundamental as payment before we can build anything else on top of it and AI and big data came in the way. PDM is a story of how AI will change the business model in the world. Typically, a bank will charge a merchant a fee so that they can accept payments. But if your merchant is this shopkeeper, a vegetable seller who makes tens of dollars in a day only, your even fee will not justify your existence. That is the beauty of the business model. That is the beauty of AI as a technology. The scale that we could serve, the scale of the business that we could build is the reason that new business model could exist out of data and technologies. This is how the payments have evolved in the world. The first payment instrument, although massage era starts with the time of Big Bang and then pre-currency era, I'm talking about something that we are very commonly used to of it today. We hand over a token, paper currency, which is signed by a governor of a central bank, and we hand over as a trust that I have some money and I'm giving it to you, why don't you accept it as a currency? The problem, the user, the currency, and the merchant, all three are dumb. In a technology language, the dumb is when there is no computing capability. All right. And then, like we learned, the one side got digitized, where your card became dumb, card remained dumb, but the computer or a little bit of computing terminal became on the, available on the shop. So the computing, the payment moved. Uh, but this is not magical. So maybe 5 to 7% in the world, and in countries like India and Japan, even lesser percentage of people actually use the card to pay. The technology got revolutionized when the mobile phone came. Mobile phone is that edge device which connects to the cloud. And that is when the payment became led by a token of yourself, which is incarnated in the smartphone of today, and then a QR code of a merchant, which is on the spot available, the merchant has it. So payments are moving from currency card to the mobile payment. And mobile payment, when I talk about, is the context that we talk about. The device knows who you are, where are you in this space, which location are you at, what transaction are you doing, and who is this merchant? That beauty allows the payment to become far more scalable to be delivered to merchants which otherwise couldn't have taken the payment. Save the risk and frauds which otherwise could have not been possible. The country, the community, and the trackability of digital currency that brings can remove even the corruptions from the world. In fact, the added value is that now the business model which used to be on payment percentage margin can bring to newer business models. Shops can accept or get loans because they are taking money in a digital method, or consumers who are shopping on them can get not just a credit card, but a credit which is in the phone itself. Or one of the real cool innovation that we've done is that when you are at a hospital or a pharmacy, when you're paying, you don't pay from your pocket, you don't pay from your credit, you pay from your insurance. 
the medical insurance, on the spot payment, instant payments from your medical insurance. That kind of things can allow us to deliver services which are beyond payment to the financial services expansion in these audiences. The most important obligation of a technology is that it has to be able to serve and impact a society at a scale. The beauty of technology is that it can do that because I believe that the capability of smartphone, capability of the data that flows from smartphone to the cloud, and the systems that are built around can bring the democratize the financial services in the world. We've been able to offer, if you notice this number that you're seeing here, 2014 and 2018, just a four year and less than four years, the number are staggeringly thousands and thousands of percent more. And the growth, if you notice, the merchant base of Paytm, the people who take payments using Paytm, is five times bigger than all of the bank combined in the country, all of the card network combined in the country. And now this could be possible because it is so logically scalable because it is built on the foundation of accepting merchant, accepting consumers with the capability of risk analysis, which otherwise not, not possible for traditional banks and companies to do it. We believe that it is just a journey that has started in one avatar and it has to go to the next level once you talk about how can you add rest of the banking services to it. Typically, a bank has a very confined area where you have to have trust, security, guard, uh, ADM machine, teller, all sorts of things there, right? I mean, it has to be a place where customers and banking can happen and people can trust it. But the cost of branch is so huge in a banking network, it's like a retail network. And the bad part is that consumers do more want to get into the branch either. But the need of branch is so that you can have cash get in and cash get out. Or an ATM network is cash get in or cash get out. Paytm is able to build a branchless banking where a common shopkeeper is able to build a banking service available. Not just the payment, upgrade to a banking service available at masses. On a launch day, which was last year, in less than one year, we've been able to build larger branch network than the largest bank in the country. And in the first year of existence itself, Paytm's bank is bigger than the largest private bank in the country, my friend, in the one year of the launch. And that is the beauty about it. Our business model is about bringing masses, half a billion Indians, to the mainstream of economy and expanding that to the ecosystem, which will be the emerging market ecosystem and taking care of five billion people in the world. I believe that opportunity of data, opportunity of capabilities in the device and opportunity in the cloud will disrupt financial industry. I would not say the word disrupt, I would say that evolve financial industry to a scale it has never before. The costs in the financial industry are so huge that we are not able to serve a very small person who does not have more than a few thousand dollars in annual income. And that is where the world's poverty is. The truth is, the technology will work towards eradicating poverty and corruption from the world once we have added the elements of blockchain, elements of transaction capabilities which are traceable, and elements of distribution to the every nook and corner. At PDM, our goal is big, but we believe that is exactly what the worth of the time is. Go big or go home. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Paytm, as Vijay just said, already services 35, 350 million users and about 8 million merchants, which far outweighs the number of uh, transactions or volumes uh, and of credit cards. So it's the biggest payments company in India. Payments will become the foundation for any commerce to develop and therefore those who can provide payments will become the hub of 
all sorts of services. So payments is a critical key. In Japan, we have the e-wallet and、uh, many new innovative financial instruments which were developed for the first time in the world. But now, the mobile payment, Japan is lagging, maybe about 100 times behind China. And I think we're also lagging behind India currently. So in that sense, in the field of payments, I think the power of AI will help to reduce costs in all corners of the industry, provide convenience, and enhance productivity. Now, I personally believe that the economic scale of India will, in 10 years or 15 years' time, rub shoulders with the size of China. As, it, as the size of China today, I mean. And、uh, I believe that Paytm is number one, the leader in that industry. Now, in Japan, we have AI used in rideshare and as well as、uh, automated. Uh, driving as well as payments,、uh, but we are far behind others, so I have this sense of crisis. But I believe that those companies who provide AI for payments、uh, will most likely become the leaders in the world. So, another example is Zoan Insurance, which is the largest,、uh, fastest growing company. Transactions and other cases, how much AI is utilized in this company, I'm sure this is going to be a big surprise to all of you. Wayne, please. Thanks, Masa. Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to hear to share what we have been doing in past four years. And actually, the first time I saw these two words together artificial intelligence and insurance I feel thrilled. For insurance, it's a business about unknown, while artificial intelligence is a technology to know more. When we put these two substances together, there's bound to be some chemical reaction. Here, I'm trying to share what we have been doing, how we ignite this、uh, chemical reaction, how we think of to push this、uh, chemical reaction to the next level, and how can we finally push that to the next, next level to be organic part of the Big Bang of a singularity. Everyone agrees technology has been changing our world in many different ways. Nowadays, we are eating better, we are travel faster, and we are live longer. And there's a trend technology has been pushing forward the world toward is actually the world is getting more and more connected. So back to the year of 2013, when we founded Zhongan as a new insurance company, we set our vision as redefine insurance. In the connected world. Before we dive in into the definition of redefining the, the insurance world, there s some numbers I want to everyone to take a look at. If there's only one thing I can highlight here, it will be the number of policies which are on the right top 5.4 billion policies we have been underwriting in last year. So, to get a better sense of that, it has been two minutes. Since I stepped onto this stage already, in the meantime, we have underwritten 20 thousands of policies all by our system without any involvement of salesperson. Actually, this is something not going to happen to traditional insurance players, for there's a lot of sales procedure will be involved. We make that happen simply by the technology. And as you can see, we have more than half of employees working as engineers. They are the other key driver to, put, to make this happen. And this number tells a big difference from a new age insurance player and traditional insurance players, but that's not all. We put our insurance into different ecosystems. This is a very important view to look into this connected world. As Jane from DD just mentioned, in the ecosystem, you know better about the driving behavior, you know more data about the passengers. 
and with all this uh, data collection, we can better underwrite the risks. There's a huge potential for insurance company to be part of this connected e economy, but there's also big challenges. In the ecosystem, will your system be flexible enough to provide flexible product design for different scenarios? In these uh, new ecosystems, will your system be good enough to price dynamically for different customers? Are you able to interact with your picky customers directly in these ecosystems? To answer these questions, actually, we have to build a smart system to really run in this smart business. There's a lot of perspective will be involved to design a smart insurance product. You need to have a dynamic pricing. You need to have a predictive uh, underwriting risk management. You need to have an interactive customer service with your customers. And all these need to be built on top of, of artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence is just not a standalone concept. In Zhongwan, artificial intelligence is built on top of big data, which is a scale up only on top of our cloud-based system. And we call this layer ABC, so which is the foundation of every application we have been building in the past four years. Here are two examples. The risk management is a key issue of our insurance company. And actually, if you look into the traditional insurance company, static table is widely used. But when we build our own underwriting system, machine learning has been built into every function. For example, shipping return policy. This is the very first product we have been launched. And at the very beginning, there's no historical data. There's no way we can come up with the most accurate pricing for that. How can we control the risk we are potentially facing? And, but with this machine learning framework, although at the very beginning we are losing money on the business, but the model has been up and running from day one. After several months keep evolving by themselves, the machine learning model actually helped us to reach a break-even point and then profitable afterwards. This is a good example. How this machine learning artificial intelligence thing makes a totally different way to run business in the future. And insurance is not just about the selling policies. Customer service is also very important before sales and after sales. Actually, people ask all kinds of questions. In Zhongwan, we have been using chatbot to handle most of these requests. And right now, we are doing this hybrid model. We do have a human sales representatives together with the chatbot. And, but we have this loopback methodology all the questions which can't be answered directly by artificial intelligence will be redirected to a sales representative. And the answer to the question will be rated and looped back to the, to the knowledge graph on the background. And actually, so as it evolves by itself, and we have seen steadily growth of the ratio that answer, questions can be answered directly by the artificial intelligence. And in some area, like healthcare, we have happily to see more than 90% of the questions can directly answer by chatbot already. There's a huge implementation for communication and for risk management, but actually what artificial intelligence can do is more than that. So if you look into the job description of an insurance company, there's a lot of operational work will be involved. So from uh, identifying an ID card, to some uh, regular data analysis. You all need human to do that work. But actually, artificial intelligence is just not one module. It's a utility for the future company. With this uh, utility, we will be able to, to well, enhance all the operations and all these things can be done automatically. It won't be the dream in the future that actually a company can be run just with less than 20 people, and most of them are actually data scientists. We benefited a lot about this AI-powered technology platform. As you can see, AI, data, and the cloud is the common layers for us to use. And uh, after two years, our business was up and running. We get a lot of requests from our partners. Actually, this partner means insurance companies. They are asking whether they can use our system to boost their business. So we took a lot of discussion, and finally, a decision was made. We want to open our technology to enable more and more players to be able to embrace this digital world. 
Actually, this is aligned with our mission to redefine insurance in a connected world, but in another way, by exporting our technology. In the year 2016, we founded a new company called Zhongan Technology, which is a full subsidiary of Zhongan Online, mainly focused on the technology exporting. And since then, we have this dual engine strategy, the insurance business and the technology exporting. There are two dimensions of our business, and they are not standalone. They are supporting each other. Without technology, our insurance business won't be so unique. Without insurance business, our technology won't be so convincing. And starting from this year, we are considering to exporting our technology to, to the other countries outside of mainland China. So what insurance business is a little bit hard to grow for you need to handle all this uh, regulation thing in different country. But there's a shared uh, viewpoint among all the countries that technology is going to be the key point for future development. So the first area we are targeting to is uh, Asia. And with the support from a soft bank, we focus on, on Japan market. There are two types of customers we are trying to solve their problem. Insurance company who want to embrace the digital world, and also the internet platform who want to be better served by the new euro insurance products. So uh, we are still in the early stage, and we believe with the artificial intelligence, we can better serve our customers. With the artificial intelligence-powered technology platform, we will be able to enable more and more players all around the world to redefine the insurance in the connected world. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So imagine that if the former speaker, Paytm, speaker, speaker from Paytm, 350 million users or customers, they already have that many customers, and 8 million uh, branch offices. On top of that, let's say a John on insurance products will be on top of that. So two companies, actually they are sitting together side by side. So these two people are going to have the alliances so that John on insurance products, technologies can be embraced and supplied to pay TM business. So if uh, insurance product is offered by the PTM, how cheap this could be and how dynamic the priced product they can offer. And for mer per merchant, actually Zanan is uh, Adiba uh, uh, offering the insurance products to the uh, Alibaba merchants. So the Alibaba users will purchase those uh, insurance products. Sometimes the products might be broken or the insurance uh, can be uh, issued to those uh, cases. So similarly, uh, they, to the Paytm merchants, 8 million merchants, and also 350 million customers of t Paytm. Maybe the payment or other insurance products can be offered to those audience. Maybe the steel uh, or products insurance. So by connecting these two AIs, using Paytm data and zone on AI technology, and by combining these two, that could be bringing quite an innovative service. That really excites me. So this is going to be promoted and expedited because they are both SoftBank families. So I'm sure that we are going to see more exciting uh, era insurance company already it has been around for hundreds of years. And for those insurers, the number of the engineers is even more than the other uh, people in the insurance, uh, in the in the company. So uh, Zonan Insurance has over 50% uh, of the engineers, and they already have 500 million. And the number of the policies sold is 5 billion. 5 billion have been already issued per year. If it's done by human beings, how many employees do you have to hire to issue 5 billion policies?
So 2,500 people issue 5 billion policies per year. It's not just possible. Only 2,500 people to issue 5 billion policies. And also, it is dynamically priced. So each time, it's the premium is going to be different. I think uh, human beings alone will not be able to do it. This is possible because they are leveraging AI. Because of AI, it can be cheaper. Because of AI, it can reduce the risk. And uh, it is a viable business as insurance company. And this is really possible enabled by AI. Now going on to healthcare. Up to now, healthcare was based on medical interviews by doctors. The doctors will listen to what the patients say and make a judgment. But today, you have x-rays, CT scans, MRI, various devices and machinery and other medical equipment to help the doctors make a judgment based on uh, the outcome of these devices. But going forward, we'll be moving into the age of preventative healthcare where the judgment will not be made by human physicians but by AI. That is, AI, let's say it's cancer, AI will be able to predict cancer or enable early detection of cancer and pinpoint the location of the cancer. Uh, this is not something human beings can do. With current healthcare, you have to make judgments based on the symptoms and it's people who will formulate the drugs and will provide them as OTC drugs a large volume of the same drugs to many, many people at the same time through over-the-counter drugs. But going forward, preventative medicine will allow adjustments by DNA. Uh, you don't need a doctor to look at the patient's face. You can make a judgment using DNA because it will be impossible for a human doctor to just look at the countenance of the patient to make a judgment whether he's sick or not. Uh, but uh, DNA is actually a series of... Uh, of uh, signals, and the human being cannot make a judgment as to where are the errors in DNA uh, which will cause ailments uh, that could be done by AI. AI will also be involved in drug discovery or drug development, and uh, you know when you ask you know no, uh, Nobel laureates who discovered new drugs, how they came upon that drug, they say, well, I just stumbled on it by accident. But AI will not rely on chance. AI will test various combinations, one after another, at a very, very rapid speed to discover new drugs. Also, the drugs can be tailor-made to each patient. Uh, they're not drugs, over-the-counter drugs, uh, the same drugs for several tens of thousands of people. It's tailor-made to each patient with the least amount of uh, byproducts or uh, side effects, uh, which will be able to best heal that particular patient and will be most effective on that patient. Uh, so depending on the symptoms and the DNA of the patient, the AI will be able to provide tailor-made drugs uh, which can have pinpoint efficacy. And one of the leading companies in this field is Gardent. Well, uh, due to circumstances uh, beyond um, our control, we were not able to invite a gentleman from Gardent. Now, if I had the chance, I can talk on for about 48 hours, but I'm sure that would inconvenience you and your schedule, so I've uh, really boiled it down. But with Gardent, we already have a new system all across the United States which uses blood samples to and uh, DNA samples uh, through liquid biopsy that is using DNA and blood samples to discover cancer at an early stage. And 80 per Gardent has 80% market share in that field. 
And Guidant is another company that SoftBank has invested several tens of billions of uh, yen yen in, in, and AI engineers, data scientists are being hired in large numbers in order to evolve the company toward the future. It, it can diagnose and also find an early point, uh, in a pinpoint discovery of various types of cancer. And uh, by matching DNA and AI, uh, Guidant is able to provide such state-of-the-art services. Another point, uh, with the use of AI, physicians will be able to more individually, more efficiently, 24 by 7, without wait time, uh, more inexpensively and more conveniently be able to provide comfort uh, to mothers and fathers whose children have actually run a fever uh, using the smartphone. A Ping and Good Doctor. We have a gentleman from Ping and Good Doctor which provides just such services. Thank you, Master. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Oliver Wang. Uh, about four years ago, uh, a group of uh, people, including me, found the Piango Doctor. So um, people can shop online, uh, can order food online, can order transportation online. But when people get sick, I hope people can get health care online. So that's why we found Piango Doctor. Every day, there are about more than 20 million people go to hospitals in China to see doctors. Most of them goes to the uh, AAA, large AAA hospitals in China, which is uh, less than 1,000 in China. So people here probably cannot imagine the experience, patient experience in China. So next I want to show you a short video uh, which we show investors on our IPO um, 